Uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, I will explain you uh, how our TPS uh, transcranial pulse stimulation is working and which result we have achieved. So uh, TPS is using mechanical brain tissue stimulation with shock waves. Shock waves are known in medicine since uh, over 40 years. And the first applications on uh, neural tissue was uh, uh, under the term TESWT, transcranial shockwave therapy. Now you can see here the range of intensity used for medical uh, shockwaves treatment. It started at the very beginning for the kidney stone disintegration, little trips with a high intensity. Meanwhile, we are at uh, less than uh, one tenth uh, of this intensity, which is used from, for pain and cell regeneration like we are using uh, for a neuralis. Now, um, again, uh, after uh, stones, unions come, soft tissue, especially pain uh, treatment starting in 1990. And 10 years uh, later, uh, the tissue regeneration come to it, expanding the further use with medical use. So in the uh, orthopedics, in cardiology, the heart stroke, aesthetics, Dermatology, wound healing, urology, erectile dysfunction, and uh, since few years now in the neurology, especially for the treatment of the Alzheimer disease, that means of the brain. So in general, of course, it started much earlier, starting with treatment uh, peripheral is spasticity of um, muscles by uh, Dr. Lothar Bush. He also treated spinal cord injury successful and uh, he had a good results with unresponsive wakefulness, uh, as you see on the uh, attached uh, papers. Uh, later on, in the following years, additional indication come to it. In 2014, uh, he started with Alzheimer's disease. And finally, in the uh, years 2015 to 17, uh, we performed a clinical approved, uh, approval study for the Alzheimer's disease treatment by TPS as you can see on the attached uh, paper published uh, this year. It was together with Professor Feinsteiner in Vienna, and it resulted in uh, approval, C approval of the Neuralist in 2018. Now to see what uh, uh, kind of pulses we are using, it's, it's not an ultrasound, it's a shock wave. The typical uh, parameters of a shock wave is a very steep, uh, rise of the pressure in the range of nanoseconds, slowly a, a falling edge and relatively low amplitude following vibrations. And uh, thus on behalf of this uh, shape, uh, the uh, signal contains a lot of different frequencies. And uh, so we are talking about broad frequency spectrum. Compared to it, focus ultrasound is also a very important entity. It's using continuous train of pulses, sinusoidal pulses, as you can see on the right. And uh, typically it started uh, to use uh, focus ultrasound for uh, tissue coagulation where you are treating, for example, cancer within the body with contactless treatment of uh, tissue. And on behalf of this uh, uh, very smooth and uh, regular uh, uh, vibrations, uh, there is only one main frequency, so the spectrum is totally different. This is basically only single frequency. So if we uh, project now this um, focus ultrasound pulse uh, on top of uh, this shockwave pulse, you see that it looks totally different. And in addition to that, uh, as I said, the focus ultrasound used originally for coagulation to stimulate without heating effect, you have to um, in, interrupts the signal so that you have only bursts of uh, inusial vibrations which are used for stimulation. Now to our application to the brain. It was, uh, it's a very new indication which has been prohib prohibited in the past. And so we have made uh, a lot of uh, basic research on that. And we first evaluated how much pressure comes into the brain because of the, of course, the bone is uh, uh, restricting the propagation of shock waves very strongly. And so we uh, measured the uh, um, pressure within or after the passage through the skull. You can see here cadaver measurements in laboratory with uh, a brain tissue and also just in the water. 
And finally, you can see on these diagrams here, first on the right, that the shape of the focal area is relatively unchanged on behalf of the passage through the skull. But of course, the intensity, the pressure is uh, decreasing strongly. So we have now here uh, in the brain reduction by 65% in pressure and correspondingly 85% reduction in energy, which is proportional to the square of the pressure. Here you see the typical uh, TPS pulse, uh, the shockwave pulse. Uh, we use them at maximum 25 uh, megapascal pulses. But of course, on behalf of this attenuation effect, within the brain, we have at maximum about uh, 9 megapascal. Now we also uh, uh, address the issue of hair because it's also additional uh, source of uh, attenuation. But fortunately, we're using enough uh, coupling gel we have at maximum 10%, and usually with much less hair, this is not neglectable. We had also tests uh, to show that there are no danger at intensities used for the brain. And so we could uh, show at uh, animal tests with practically rats, that in spite of very high intensities used, we do observe no bleeding. And you can hear summarizing that we have a limitation of maximum pressure, 25 megapascal, a low uh, energy density. And uh, of course, uh, the energy flux density is on maximum 0.25. Now here is a complete uh, treatment setup, the device neurons, uh, the chair where the patient is situated for the treatment. An important component of the equipment is a body track system. Uh, which allow us to uh, document the treatment and maintain homogeneous treatment or uh, energy delivery. You can see here uh, you have an infrared camera, uh, then uh, the reflector uh, on the uh, treatment uh, part here of the spectacles uh, for the patient, reflector on the handpiece, and this equipment helps us to um, show uh, or control the treatment uh, very precisely. Uh, we also need a calibration with this calibration tool, which is very simple at the very, in the very beginning of each treatment. Here's a typical uh, how this treatment is performed. On the right side, you can see the information from the uh, body track system showing how the energy is distributed and whether it is homogeneously from uh, energy level point of view, so darker, so more energy has been applied. And on the left side, the parameters setting for the number of pulses, energy flux density and frequency. Now uh, to uh, stress out the uh, advantages of the body track system. So we have a, we are monitoring and documenting the system uh, during the treatment real time. We have a uh, visualization in three dimensions, three directions, 3D. Uh, and um, also the color is uh, representing uh, where the energy is applied and how much energy is being applied. And of course, uh, we are to have it personalized and exit uh, documentation, we are using the patient data, the MRI or CT data of his brain. Here you can see that uh, the setup allows uh, the treatment of the complete um, a gray matter of the brain of the cortex and the four, uh, focal area, which is about three centimeters long, fits very nicely into this uh, gray matter area or space. And uh, so here how it looks when you are treating uh, the patient. Of course, here the gel is missing. The areas we are treating are especially responsible for the memory functions. So it is the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, and the precuneus. Now, the important issue is uh, which uh, biologic effects uh, are introduced by using the uh, TPS. The TPS uh, basically uh, heritage all the um, effects proven scientifically uh, for shock waves. So you can see here uh, that the process called mechanotransduction, that is uh, basically the mechanical stimulation of biological effects starts with increased uh, cell wall permeability. And uh, here is uh, also the uh, blood barrier uh, 
barrier opening is possible in animal at least. We have stimulation of mechanosensitive teller uh, channels. And uh, the most important um, biological agent, the nitrate oxide, takes care for vasodilatation, increased metabolism, angiogenesis, long term blood um, supply improvement, anti inflammatory effect, and uh, further uh, uh, stimulation of uh, growth factor, especially important the VGF, the ENGF, and the BN uh, BDNF, uh, which are responsible for a neuron or um, brain uh, tissue growth. And part of this effect are, of course, also the stimulation of stem cells. It fits very well to the known uh, origins as far as known for, this, uh, for the Alzheimer disease, the deposit of proteins, inflammation, virus infection, uh, reduced blood supply, neuroapoptosis. So it's uh, the spectrum of uh, uh, PPS functions is very well fitted to Alzheimer disease um, deficits. And uh, now uh, we uh, performed this study mentioned at the very beginnings uh, with, professor, with Dr. Losebusch and Professor Weinsteiner, altogether 19 patients, uh, which have been uh, used to uh, show the efficacy for the um, approval of the device. Interesting is uh, are the first patient treated by Dr. Losebusch because it's, we have a long-term observation possible. And so we can see in the next slide the effect of uh, long-term effects. In parallel to that, we have a multiple placebo control RCT trials ongoing. Here are the long-term results. Uh, so after the uh, boost treatment, so the sixth session in two weeks, the green area, three uh, months follow-up. And finally, in the uh, further time, there have been maintenance treatment every six weeks, as shown here. And you can see that uh, the uh, very good uh, improvement, that score improvement of over 12% could have been more or less maintained during the first year. Here on the bottom, you see the uh, natural um, decrease of uh, brain activity when treated only conservatively. And uh, now we have here the follow-up of second year. And uh, unfortunately, it, uh, it's visible that uh, the improvement decreased again. And another boost-up treatment was possible to get uh, upper again. Unfortunately, not at the same level at the very beginning. That shows that in the future, we have to apply this boost treatment earlier during the treatment, probably in the course of the uh, second year. Here you can see summarized the results of the uh, clinical multicenter trial by Dr. Losebusch and Professor Weinsteiner, which is very nicely described in this uh, paper I showed you at the very beginning. So the CERAT improvement is over 10%. You can see here the improvement of the um, um, verbal and memory functions. And finally, summarizing, we can see here that we have an, uh, six treatments uh, with 6,000 pulses within two, we two weeks, outpatient treatment of 30 minutes only, no pain, no side effects. Uh, and we don't need any cognitive training during the treatment, only the maintenance treatments as follow up. There is no need to shave the patient's head, and there is no need for fixation. So uh, the TPS treatment is effective and safe. And we have also further positive outcomes for another um, neurological treatments in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.